All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. So when you have a watch, you don't want to just go by first impressions. The longer you have the watch, such as this Tudor Black Bay uh, GMT, the longer you have it, the more you you uh, you figure things out. You you come across impressions that you didn't have initially, and uh, you you develop a deeper sense uh, of the watch. And I want to thank Lee, all the way from Santa Fe, for sending me this. I got to know Lee through my channel several years ago. And uh, very flattered uh, that he would uh, send this to me. He wanted to uh, teach me a certain lesson about timepieces. And I think the best way to describe this lesson is with an analogy he used. You know, he knows I've been... Um, uh, curating my hobby uh, which is pretty much buying uh, mid-tier watches mostly Seiko mostly Seiko and he wanted me to see the difference between a handcrafted Swiss watch like this Tudor and the mass-produced watches that I've owned and he did use an analogy coffee he and I both didn't start drinking coffee till we were in our 40s and he said, you know, I was cool drinking Starbucks initially, you know, this mass-produced coffee in a vat. But eventually, you know, I started using a burr grinder and using freshly roasted coffee beans. And now I only use an AeroPress. And I can't go back. I can't go back to the mass-produced. And so for a lot of us who love watches, who think about watches all the time, surely we have a deep interest in the bang for your buck proposition of a mass produced watch and a handcrafted artisan watch with all the lineage and heritage and all of that uh, and uh, you gotta really love Tudor because it, it's for the true watch lover someone who's not interested in having the big name you know it's Tudor it's kind of off the radar for a lot of people but let's look at uh, that handset there very interesting you can see the the red and so what I want to do is I want to tell you the uh, my likes and uh, a few I have a few dislikes of it but uh, first want to give you uh, some likes. let me uh, I'll put it next to my Scion blue just for contrast just get it just like that alright my Scion blue MM200 by Seiko. Just for size comparison. It's so funny. <laughs> the Seiko is 44 and the Tudor's 41. The Tudor plays a lot bigger on the wrist. You know, don't go, you can never go by the minute. Whoa! You gotta always have the uh you gotta always have the watch. Yeah, good good ring light, McMahon. Fast, fast hand too. You got it. So yeah, you always gotta go by the putting it on your wrist. Speaking of wrist, the, the number one thing I like about the Tudor is it has this magisterial confident uh, wrist presence you really you really know you're wearing a, a beautiful watch when you put this on and and I want to tell you something when when it's in the box with you know eight other Seikos it, it, it doesn't really stand out that much but when you put it on your wrist you know you've got a substantial watch on your wrist I mean the lugs are 50 it, it's, it's a very big watch Okay, uh, the second thing I love it is the comfort. As big as it is, it's so well balanced, no top heaviness, not like um, when I had the MM300 and I would even say uh, the MM200 current gen, which I love, I have the all stainless version, it is a little top heavy, it's not too bad, but it's a, this is definitely, uh, this Tudor is definitely well balanced and I love the comfort of it. Number three, this is huge. I love the build quality. There's no compromises anywhere. The bracelet, the crown, the bezel, the loom. You, you can tell this is a handcrafted watch and it's not mass produced. And uh, it's really the lesson that was um, imparted by uh, Lee, you know, using his coffee analogy. You, you know, how do you go back to mass produced coffee when you're drinking the good stuff? And that, that was the lesson... Uh, that he imparted there. 
Um, I love the service intervals. Lee explained to me, when you get a tutor, you don't mess around. You, you send it directly to an authorized tutor place. And about every seven years, you're going to spend 500 bucks. That, for everything I know about servicing mechanical watches, especially a Swiss luxury piece, that's really a good, um, that's a good service interval. Uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, you may not have the watch for a couple months, though. So uh, do you have a little G-Shock in the back room you can put on while you're waiting? And uh, so that's number four. Number five, I love that you can buy variations of this watch. This Tudor, you can get, you know, there's non-GMT versions, Heritage 41. There's, there's a lot of versions. I've been looking at them. You can get them brand new for $3,600. And I will tell you, that's worth the price, especially if you're slowing down, if you're not going to go on the, uh, the mid-tier merry-go-round every month, which is what I've been doing. I've been spending about 6000 a year on the mid-tier merry-go-round. And if you wanted to slow down, um, you know, 30, this is worth $3,600. I, <laughs> I mean, I know what Swiss luxury timepieces cost. I know the range. It's definitely worth $3,600 brand new. You know what's crazy? There was an all-red dial one I was looking at it on eBay. It, it had never been worn... I don't. I don't remember all the details. It was. It was some place in Orange County. Had 100 percent. They sold it for 2,800. Someone got a, a brand new one for 2,800. You can get deals. You know what's interesting? You can't get the same deals on the one that I like best, the Black Bay Steel. It's. Uh, I think it's in demand. That's my sense. Is that it's in big demand? So let me give you some dislikes about the. Uh, let me give you some dislikes I have about the Tudor. Uh, well, first of all, I, I wouldn't get this particular model. This is Pepsi. I can't do deal with Pepsi on any watch. It drives me crazy. Who knows why? I don't know why that is. Uh, don't like the Pepsi two-tone bezel. I don't like the numbers, 2 through 22. I, my brain just goes, that doesn't make sense. Uh, now, what's interesting, uh, I prefer the all-red bezel, and that the numbers are different, 10 to 50. And I would definitely prefer 10 to 50. Uh, on the bezel. So the bezel doesn't work for me on this. Uh, two, let me show you. I don't like the snowflake uh, hour and second hand. That's what they call them. They call them snowflake. I'm not a big fan of the snowflake. Uh, for me, the snowflake, I was trying to tell them, what does it remind It reminds me of a weapon that you would see hanging in a medieval castle. And that freaks me out. The, the hand, the so-called uh, snowflake hand, reminds me of a weapon, a medieval weapon. You, you bludgeon someone with it or something. Uh, and uh, that wouldn't work for me. That would not work for me at all. No way. So, uh, the other thing I want to tell you about this tutor, my last... My last uh, dislike about this tutor, it's right under the light, which I don't like. Okay. The last dislike I have of the tutor, it's too busy. I find it to be too busy, this tutor Black Bay GMT. Um, I, when I wear this watch, I feel like I'm a one-man band. I got a banjo, trumpet, stomp stick, tambourines, gazoo. I, and then when I, uh, when I would just wear my Seikos, the design language makes me more serene. The design language, it, it, it speaks to my reptilian brain more. Let me see if I can get that. I don't like that uh, ring in the dial. It's giving me anxieties. I, I think the, um, the busyness got to me. And so um, I think I must have a nervous personality, and there's something about the design language of Seiko that calms me down. Oh, what are you saying, McMahon, that uh, Seiko is the equivalent of uh, Prozac? Is that, is that where you're going with this, brother? Huh? No, sir. All right. So uh, I like design language. Uh, so here's some of my final thoughts. 
Um, so Lee challenged me by sending me that tutor. He challenged me. He, um, he sent me this tutor and honestly I got depressed when I got it and I realized that the hand craftsmanship and the quality for 3600 bucks was all there and you know here I am spending 6000 a year I mean he really challenged me here I've been spinning my wheels and what's so funny is um, is I now appreciate not by reading literature but through first-hand experience I now I really appreciate the glory of a handmade Swiss watch and I um, I really understand it on a deep level and I feel really challenged by uh, buying uh, you know mass-produced watches over and over and over again and uh, so I started thinking well what would you do because I, as I was looking at the tutor, I was saying, you know what, you know what happened to me? I'm not going to lie to you. I ended up falling in love with my Seikos even more. The design speaks to me more. I would like to slow down though. I would like, I think to get this build quality, I'd like to get maybe a Grand Seiko Sport. Uh, I don't know. Or, or maybe I would get the uh, Tudor uh, Black Bay Steel. But uh, I'm humble. I want to thank Lee, and I'll give you more thoughts on this later. Until next time, I'm out.